guys hello let's get straight into business let's start talking about if the ipad mini is good for artists So this is going to be my review of the iPad mini 6th generation. This isn't going to be a very technical review, this is solely talking about if I think the iPad mini is worth it for artists and people who already use iPads for work. So prior to getting my iPad, I had the iPad Pro 2018. I use this all day, every day. I use it as a second monitor. I do all of my illustration work with this. So I was really curious if I even had a need for the iPad mini or it would just be redundant. And let me tell you, this is one of my favorite pieces of tech I've ever bought. And I don't want to hype it up too much because there are definitely cons and there's a lot more cons than I thought that there would be with this. But overall, I absolutely love it. And if I were to lose this in a fire, I would instantly go back and buy a new one. So let me talk a little bit about the type of person I think would really like this. This is made solely for the person who is on the go a lot at coffee shops, restaurants, things of that nature. You have a commute if you're on the bus or the subway. This is perfect. I've been having so much fun going to museums and going out to lunch with myself and just sitting there and drawing the people around me. When I'm in the middle of a big project, I just send my files over here and I get to work outside up my desk which is so lovely it's so just low-key that I don't feel rude bringing it out in public and using it unlike this thing when I bring this out this is a conversation ender this is like don't talk to me I'm doing stuff getting used to this was a little bit of a challenge the size is very uncomfortable <laughs> it definitely was a learning curve in learning how to use this and where to rest my arm I use almost only Procreate on this and I found that when I was drawing I actually wanted to turn it sideways and rest my arm on the side and illustrate on half the screen. This is where I think the iPad Pro definitely shines is it's so much more ergonomic and it's much easier to use. When I have big projects when I know that I'm going to be illustrating for hours at a time I always switch to my iPad. This has not replaced my iPad Pro. If it was a little more comfortable to draw on I think that it could potentially but overall it's not that easy to illustrate for more than like two hours on this but how small it is it definitely makes up for it again it's so light if you have a bag that you usually put a book in or a kindle in it will pretty much fit in this um it doesn't feel too much bulkier than my phone even other than that I do notice a lag between the iPad Pro and the iPad Mini. I have also found that this crashes sometimes. I've never had it crash during Procreate. I have had it just kind of load forever and scare the crap out of me, but games, it does crash. I love Stardew Valley and it crashes on Stardew Valley all the time. And I don't know if it's user error or it's just that game is really bulky but crashes all the time and destroys the entire day. Once it was a Stardew Valley like autumn festival where you have to win the stars and play little games and I spent like an hour trying to get those 200 tickets to get the star fruit and then it crashed and then I had to do it all over. So I am a little extra biased when it comes to it crashing during games but that's just because it burdened me. For all I do notice a difference in power between this and the iPad Pro but again it's not for those heavy level activities. Activities. I would never try to 3D model on this or use Nomad Sculpt because I really don't have faith in it. That's definitely a big boy iPad job. Another con to this that is specifically for animators and illustrators is Procreate on the iPad mini does not have a color history area, which is crazy to me, really inconvenient, because once you put a color down, there's no way to go back and get that color unless you're manually using the palette and tracking your colors, which to me seems crazy. I looked it up and Reddit said that it was because the iPad mini is so small, they didn't want it to be so cluttered, but that just seems 
it's wild. And that's not necessarily the iPad's fault that's Procreate, but some artists who work with a lot of colors and illustrate that way, where that will be a serious deal breaker. I do mainly really simple illustrations that are one color, so it works with what I need. But you girls who do like actual realistic illustrations with multiple colors, this genuinely could be a deal breaker. So I wish that you guys just think on that and decide if it is worth the headache or not, not having a history button for colors. It is surprisingly more of a deal breaker than you would think. But other than that, I just have like minor gripes with it. I feel like there's some funky things that happen because the screen's so small. Um, I notice when you open the screensaver, you can't see how charged your iPad is. It just says touch ID. And there's a bunch of weird things where they remove the top bar and overall it just it isn't as pleasant of an experience as somebody coming from an iPhone and a big iPad who's used to having those things. That is the most nitpicky thing probably in this entire video. So that was my rant. My conclusions are you are looking for a casual device to take with you that is portable. That is the biggest plus of this is its portability. If you have a lot of downtime in your life where you're in coffee shops, you're on the subway, you're just sitting around waiting for a bus, this is the perfect tool for you because that time in your day adds up. A lot of us are commuting for hours at a time. That's hours where you could be working, having fun, and reading. If your main goal is portability and you have those habits already. I think I love this so much because I bought a Kindle last year and I've successfully replaced like scrolling on Instagram with being on a Kindle when I'm out in public. So to me it was super easy going from reading on the Kindle to just dropping on the iPad. If you're confident you have those habits, this would be the perfect device. I would not recommend this if you are an artist just starting out and you're looking for your first iPad. I would recommend just getting Getting a normal iPad and whatever Apple Pencil is compatible with it because I feel like this device would be a nightmare for people just starting digital art. Digital art in general I found feels really unnatural and I had such a hard time learning it and even now that I've been doing it for ooh, I've been drawing on iPads for almost 10 years now dealing with the iPad mini and how small and how clunky and awkwardly shaped it was was a challenge for for me and I have so much practice drawing on iPads. I couldn't imagine somebody who's just getting started out doing digital art. In general, it's not the most beginner friendly device. <laughs> not having the optimized color history and just all the little quirks that come with it, I don't think that it would be great for a beginner. I think that this iPad is for artists who are looking for a fun little toy to add into their their artistic toolbox because that's what it feels like. It just feels like a toy. It's not able to fully get a job done. It feels like you need a bigger iPad or a computer or something to supplement with it because at the end of the day, it's just small. It's <laughs> It does a good job at really casual things, but I don't know if I'm just blind or what, but I need a big screen to get those really nice finishing touches done. So if you're an artist looking for a toy, this is the best toy, but it's also expensive and not the most practical, but also super practical because it's so portable. So there's so many pros and cons to it. It, I really think it comes down to will it fit into your lifestyle or not. But yeah, there's my rambly review of the iPad mini. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.